Welcome back. Assemblyman Rudy Salas is leading efforts to audit the state's employment development department, looking for answers to backlogs and issues with the call center. He joins us live this morning to talk about those efforts. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So we're five months into this pandemic. The skyrocketing mm -hmm. rates of unemployment now have been lasting for months. So what was the final straw for you that said right now is the time to look further into the EDD and see what's going on? Oh, my office has received uh, hundreds of calls actually about EDD. We've helped. I know at least we have 250 cases that we've actively been working on with EDD. We know people are suffering out there ever since the pandemic started and people started having their hours cut, their shifts cut, and they've been losing their jobs. And so uh, yesterday, on September 1st, me, along with 37 of my colleagues, both Democrats and Republicans, senators and assembly members in the legislature have called on an emergency audit of EDD to try to find some efficiencies to find out what's the reason for the big backlog because back in March, uh, the legislature actually appropriated millions of dollars to the governor to actually help take care of this because we knew that there was going to be an issue. We saw the early warning signs of what could possibly happen at EDD. Lo and behold, it did happen. Uh, EDD did get flooded with a lot of cases. And so what we're trying to do is trying to figure out why when people are calling my office, they're talking about, I haven't received anything from EDD since March. I haven't received anything from EDD since April. It's almost been four, five, six months now, and I still haven't received anything, and they're just looking for some relief. They're still trying to find ways to put food on the table for their families. And so, you know, enough is enough. We need to do something. We need to step in. We need to do this emergency audit. We need to get the state auditor in there to say, hey, one, what have you been doing with all of the money that's been appropriated to you to hire more people to help people with their cases, mm -hmm. right? Secondly, how are we finding some efficiency so we can get things done? People shouldn't have to be waiting almost half a year, six months, five months, four months, three months, even one month to try to get some relief that's promised for them. I mean, this is taxpayers' money. This is money that's been taken out of their paychecks when they've been working. And now that they need help, the government needs to step in and help them collect some of uh, their own money that they've been paying in unemployment mm -hmm. insurance. So you filed this on September 1st. Have you heard back from the EDD about this at all? Uh, no, I've not heard back from the EDD yet. Uh, right now it's in the legislature. So I've uh, sent this to the Joint Legislative Audit Committee in the state legislature, which I am the chair of. Uh, once I get approval from there, we're going to go ahead and have the state auditor move straight in. The best part about this is we don't need approval from EDD. We just need approval from the legislature. And then we're just going to let the governor know, hey, this is what we're doing. We're going to step in and find out where all that money has been going. Why aren't we helping people in an efficient and timely manner? Speaking of the governor, what are your thoughts on the governor's handling of the COVID crisis and California's response overall? And what are you hearing from your constituents? Oh, my constituents are frustrated. You know, they need relief. EDD is a big, uh, is a big point of contention for them. They're trying to understand, one, how do they get the help and the relief that they need? Um, and secondly, people are just trying to figure out, uh, when can I open? When can I open? I'm also hearing from small businesses trying to figure out, look, they want to be in compliance, but they're trying to understand the rules of the game. And they feel like over the last couple of months, the rules keep changing, right? We moved uh, from different systems, different tiers. Uh, now we have a four tier system uh, that's supposed to be a little more nimble and a little more flexible for the locals, but people are still trying to ha having a hard time navigating that. So in addition to small businesses trying to figure that out, we also have on the other end, people that have been affected by the pandemic mm -hmm. and by COVID-19 trying to figure out you know, what can they do to still put food on the table in terms of EDD um, insurance and assistance? We're almost out of time, but quickly, I want to touch on something different than coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Can we talk a little bit about AB 1299? It's a bill you authored that would prevent police departments from hiring officers with a history of misconduct. Quickly, what's the status of that bill? So the bill right now is passed the legislature. It's on its way to the desk. And what AB 1299 does, it says when a cop has to go through an investigation because there was been a complaint. So think of something like sexual harassment or tampering with evidence that that investigation continues to go through because what was happening is we were finding that investigations would stop because an officer would resign. And really what they would do is transfer to another department. So the investigation that they had never followed them. And so what this bill says is it says 
that investigation must continue. They must find out what happened, and then they must give that to post, the post committee, which actually does all the background checks, because we know at the end of the day, we don't want bad officers transferring from one police department to another, becoming another community's problems, because we know when you have a bad officer and they do something bad, that puts taxpayers on the hook, especially with uh, lawsuits. All right, Assemblyman Rudy Salas, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're going to post this full interview to our website, turn to 23com Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for having me.